G'day guys, Tools20 here and welcome back to Springwood. It is episode 33 and we are working around the airport once again as we are fleshing out this area. Um, in the next few episodes, uh, we're almost finished for the whole surrounding of the airport. Today's focus is going to be on industrial and these concrete rivers that I love so much. I've spoken about this before, but I'm taking so much inspiration from one of my favorite aspects of LA and that is these rivers that just snake their way all throughout that city. However, before I do jump into a ramble of things about the episode, I do want to thank you guys so much for getting in touch about my website ID and not shutting it down, which is something that I was sort of worried about because it's something that I'm really keen to do. Um, if you missed it, last episode I put it out to everybody that I am interested in making a wiki page for Springwood, scenes as we are all developing the story of Springwood together. It is quite unique, being set in the 80s and based on so many different places around the world. From day one of Springwood, when I first started this series a year ago, the whole idea was to create this story, and I think the next step is to create the wiki page. So. This is something I've been working on and I really appreciate everyone's suggestions and people who have gone out and started making things. Um, I am going to make the bare bones of it on a wiki site, um, not one that you or anyone probably is aware of, but I was in, t I was, uh, I was in touch with somebody who put me in the direction of basically a, a site that he's already made and I'm going to be using that platform to create the wiki on. I'm hoping to release it in the next episode of Springwood, so I guess in a weekend away. So yeah, more information to come for that, but again guys, thank you so much for getting in touch. I look forward to reading all your stories that you end up putting down on it. That will all be addressed in the episode next week. For now, what I am doing on screen, I am putting down lots of industrial uh, bits and pieces for this area. So like I said before, the focus for this uh, episode is industrial uh, spaces and in terms of industry, I am focusing on areas that lie around these concrete rivers around LA because I, for some reason I find them very interesting and I um, find myself floating around these places more so than any other place around LA. I don't know what it is, I think it might be a combination of the train line that kind of follows these rivers and all this industry that somehow sits on these rivers. Um, it, the whole combination I think is really interesting and something that I've been wanting to put into Springwood for a really long time and I've had a couple of cracks at it and this is probably, this is definitely my best yet. In terms of the roads, I think this is what really creates the atmosphere of this area. I'm using the car park roads that were released on the workshop a couple of months ago and I'm not really using them as car parks and I'm instead using them as roads and they work really nicely for this area. One thing that works really well for these roads is um, they have a far cooler and more um, atmospheric texture than the regular roads that I'm using. Um, they're way more broken up and old looking and when combined with the different types of car parks for instance, I'm using uh, some of the larger car parks just for these spaces around the industry. Um, and I'm also using um, the roads that I think there might be, um, I think they're like a road with a car park um, on the side of them. You can see me using them uh, in bits and pieces. They're basically a much right, wider road than the regular types of roads that I've been using. And that seems to be a lot more of a realistic look for what I'm going for. Um, I've been placing down quite a lot of storage areas around this area because I'm noticing that is an occurring feature within LA's industry. So that is something that I really wanted to get down and uh, really emphasize around these areas. And what I'm working on right now is the storage center that is um, basically one of those areas where you basically rent out a uh, garage. Uh, we have heaps of these in Oz and I'm noticing heaps in LA. Actually, now that I think about it, this is probably not very 80s. I don't know, can you let me know if, I, if these things even existed in the 80s? I tend to do that. I will build something and then it won't be after I've built it. I then realize that it probably wasn't really an 80s feature. 
Um, by the way, I did put it out to you guys in the last episode. What things do I need to add to make uh, Springwood more 80s? And, um, you know, I got a, quite a few messages, people saying things about uh, more to be placing down more malls and to be placing down more um, older style billboards. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that I'm starting to put into place. One thing that I was talking about actually, and um, I think I mentioned in the last episode, that I need to be placing down less containers. This episode, I placed down heaps of containers. So, <laughs> I obviously didn't really take that suggestion too much on board. Um, because I use them so much for a filler, they I don't really know what else to use as a filler. Perhaps we can add to the Springwood story something about how containers were a massive feature within the 80s within Springwood. I don't know. This, I'm starting to think that maybe this um, this wiki page might be able to really help me justify a lot of the quirks of Springwood, like it's left-handed driving and just the inspiration from Sydney and then LA and then from New York. It's just an absolute mess of a city. But I, 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 I like it that way, I think. Um, I can't help but be inspired by the things around Australia. It's just, um, you know, you see things you like around the country, around the where I, where I live, so um, I can't help but put those things down. But I am trying to get a little bit more 80s. Uh, I, I'm working on some billboards actually to add to a bit more, a bit more of that, um, that feel. And um, like I always talk about, Easter eggs are a massive feature within this city. However, they do take a bit of time to figure out how I'm going to be placing down things that you kind of catch out of the corner of your eye and you think, ah, nice little touch there, $2. Um, they're the things that I really want to be working on. They do take a bit of extra time. So these billboards, wait, I'm not even going to tell you when I'm going to be placing them down. Just keep an eye out so you might better notice a couple of bits and pieces that I'm referencing. I really love the way this area turns out. Like I said before, these rivers are so interesting to me and all this industry as well is something that is, um, you know, quite a fascinating spot. So I'm um, very happy to be placing down a lot of uh, industry around this area and to be uh, really filling in the gaps between the suburbs and the uh, airport because I do want to be taking some cinematics very shortly of the airport and I don't really want to be doing that with lots of blank spaces around so it's pretty, um, yeah, it's kind of essential to really be filling in these areas. Um, what I'm doing at the moment, and I'm just making a lot of industries and trying to think about what their sole purpose is. So, you saw me place down this storage center, so I want to keep everything quite storage-esque around there. And then this area here is like a bit of dirty industry, so I'm placing down these boxes. And um, this truck is sort of, well, there it is there. This truck is being placed there because he's um, unloading um, the cargo, or loading, whatever. <laughs> just, um, I like to think about what I am placing down when I do um, work on these areas. I just feel like that really helps to create that realism as um, that is something that I'm really going for with this series. And um, But also the realism of a big city. And in terms of building that big city, a lot of these places are fillers. I mean, you might notice when I am scrolling around the city, you'll see places that are very undeveloped and places that are highly developed. and. You know, that's all part of the story with Springwood because I do want this series to go on forever and ever and it's a big city, so in terms of building a big city, you do need that balance between highly detailed areas and places that are just uh, downright ugly, which I don't really show you, I don't really show those areas. Going back to what I was saying about Easter eggs within Springwoods, um, lots of throwbacks to 80s era stuff um, is something that I really want to achieve um, a lot more than I am really um, doing at the moment. It's very hard, well it was, it's, it was kind of a hard series to start because there weren't very many assets on the workshop that were set within the 80s era. Um, somebody pointed out before about my um, the trucks that I'm using, they're not actually from the 80s, they're very modern. That's because there are just no uh, olden 80s style trucks that I can use um, in their place, which is really annoying, but so I do have to use every now and again, just something that is from um, a bit more of a modern time. But going back to Easter eggs, and if anybody is interested in creating anything for Springwoods, 
um, please get in touch. I, um, I've had a couple of asset creators working with me, like Bisquigglehausen. He created an entire flock of planes that were uh, set in the 80s. And um, also Archie Cunningham, who designed so many um, vehicles for me to drive around Springwood, as well as my own police cars. If you've ever noticed them driving around, they're so damn cool. <laughs> I love them so much. So keep your eye out for some of those. I think I might add them into the cinematics at the end. So if you are an asset creator or um, somebody who is interested in getting in touch um, or got some ideas for some cool assets that I can be placing down, not just vehicles but um, all sorts of things that you probably are missing from the 80s, please get in touch because um, that is what this series is all about. It's all about achieving that look and it can be a bit tricky to do it all by myself. Um, what I'm doing on screen though and I've you see me placing down a bit of shrubbery around this area. Um, I actually, um, I, I built this probably um, in two parts. I built this one half of this episode like a, for about two weeks ago and I finished off this episode probably about a week ago and um, within that time frame I changed my mind and placed down a lot more train lines because that is something that I've been wanting to work on a lot more. So you'll see me go through um, and change a couple of bits and pieces that I um, have added from the past because um, these train lines are something that I wanted to really emphasize within this area. I know that when I build train lines in the past, uh, so often I will build an entire neighborhood and then realize that I wanted to place in a train line there and then you'd have to go back and demolish so much. So, so often I need to be placing down these train lines well in advance and then I can figure out where everything else works um, from there. So I will be actually doing an entire episode somewhere down the track, probably not in the nearest of futures, but I will be doing a whole episode based on just figuring out the train network within this area of Springwood because this area of Springwood, this side of Springwood, I guess you don't really know what I'm talking about because you haven't seen a map of Springwood yet, but this, this side of Springwood is full of industry. And if you're wondering what sort of industry, I want you to think about uh, docks that are a bit like old school Brooklyn style and then in terms of more inland stuff I want you to think about um, Port LA and all the train networks that uh, creep along those LA rivers they're basically the style of industry that's going to be around this side of Springwood when I have my wiki page up and running, you'll totally understand what I'm talking about because I'll be including an interactive map that you can properly explore Springwood. Um, at least um, that is definitely the plan. And when talking to someone, um, when talking to the person who actually created this wiki page that I'm going to be using, apparently that's very much possible. So I'm really excited to actually be placing stuff like that down. In terms of what I'm doing on the screen though and um, I wanted to emphasize a bit more on abandoned industry within Springwood so I've spoken about this a couple of times in, an ep in episodes and for um, for cities industry usually starts within the city and as the city grows and the, as suburbs sprawl on out industry has to make its way a bit further out of the city so this is just one of those areas where this um, city has expanded the airport is um, somewhat close to this spot now and we're getting a lot more suburbs sort of rolling out so this some parts of industry are just sort of um, becoming a little bit more abandoned and this is just another little abandoned spot of industry I don't know what it was probably in the past maybe you'll end up writing about it on the wiki page which would be very cool um, to me it sort of seems a bit like a lumber mill or some sort of old school industrial uh, I don't know oil works or something like that uh, who knows what this place is for but I wanted it to be very old looking so you know these buildings are very um, old school and there's a lot of uh, nature creeping uh, in between the cracks of lots of areas. Um, you often find lots of piles of rubble. For some reason the rubble turned out just absolutely on point. I think that pile just there is just so, so spot on the money. I don't know how that rubble, that piece of rubble like works so much better than any other ones that I've been placing down but uh, it's, it just turned out super nice. So um, yeah. Just something that I'm really proud of for some reason. Um, the cinematic really highlights how awesome that looks, by the way. So um, stay tuned for that. 
Everything that I'm building right now, I um, demolish because I wanted to replace it with something that was a lot more LA based. I mean, this, what I'm building right now is, uh, it was a bit of a filler and um, I didn't really want too much, really um, too much of a focus on this spot. However, I really, um, you know, when I returned back to this build, I decided that I think rail really needed to um, be a bit more emphasized around this spot. So I do end up placing down this railroad track as you see me doing now. Um, and what I, what I'm noticing a lot around LA, um, around these rivers, is that these train tracks will, um, they expand where there's a lot of industrial and a lot of places where they're unloading and um, unpacking and, and um, doing whatever they need to do with the cargo. And then it'll just get super skinny around other little spots. So I wanted there to be um, a real mix between skinny rail and large rail, um, if that makes any sense. So this part of the rail network is the big rail <laughs> section. Uh, uh, yeah, it's um, I guess I wanted this spot to be a bit more emphasized with um, With the fact that this is probably where most of the cargo is being unloaded by the way I'm just gonna just put it out there every every episode. I seem to emphasize one particular word and today's um, Today's word that I'm emphasizing is the word emphasize for some reason. I think I've probably said it about 20 times Whereas I don't think I've ever said it in any other episode. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> I don't really know why I'm doing it. Um, but I dare say, you're going to hear it a couple of other times in this episode. Uh, so yeah, this is um, this is all being changed now. I made it in this rail. Um, I love this rail so much. Um, I snake it underneath these bridges. These bridges that go off into the domestic side of the airport. And I just leave it there because I do plan to construct it a little bit later on down the track. The reason why I wanted it to snake all the way around the river towards uh, the airport is because I do have some more industrial um, spaces that are closer to um, that air train that I built a little while back. And um, I figured if there's a train line here, then it's probably going to reach all areas of the um, industry so that's why I ended up um, doing um, doing that like that um, these little spots here that I'm placing down um, I'm noticing heaps of these within LA and it's basically where the railroads network um, sporks off sporks off forks off <laughs> I guess a spork um, goes off into these little shoots where they kind of creep into these industrial spots and um, I really wanted to make these because I think they're super cool um, I do think they're pretty old school. I don't think a lot of them are being used anymore. I'm um, as far as I can tell. If you live in LA, please let me know because we don't really have too much of these spaces within Australia. So, you know, noticing them on uh, Google Earth around LA, and I've also noticed them within Brooklyn as well. Uh, I find them really fascinating, and I find the rail history behind LA really interesting. So, that is um. That is something I really want to learn more about. So if you have any information for me, please hit me up in the comments below. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of focusing on that sort of a rail network at the moment and the industry that uh, fits around this uh, network. And um, you know, I, the reason why I said I guess they're abandoned or not used as much anymore. Um, the reason why I say that, it's a total guess on my behalf, but the reason why I say that is because I, I, they don't seem to be really used as much and I don't think rail is quite used as much as back in the day so um, I, I think they rely more on uh, lorries and trucks and things like that whereas I don't imagine much cargo will be coming through the train lines like this. Um, I know floating over Brooklyn, um, you know I went to Brooklyn probably about six months ago and um, I noticed you know, flying over Brooklyn on uh, Google Earth, and I found all these spaces and I thought, wow, you know, Brooklyn must still be very industrious. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to checking out these areas. And then when I got there, um, a lot of it's been converted into like funky spaces and parks and all this stuff. So I was kind of disappointed to find like so much of these areas have been changed. You know, I guess it's just the way the world works. You know, we up end up upgrading and 
you know, the people who live around here, I mean, these places are spot on on the money in terms of real estate. So a lot of these places do end up becoming abandoned and turned into something uh, different. Though Springwood being in the 80s, we can totally justify using this rail um, still and all this industry still existing somewhere towards the center of the city. So that's why we have these places so close. Mind you, they're not that close. I mean, Springwood is so damn huge. These places are actually quite far away from the actual CBD of Springwood. But in terms of how big we are going, we are, um, we are kind of close to the city. Um, by the way, that also leads me to my next uh, point of conversation. Conversation where you're just listening and I'm talking. We, um, we need to be building some suburbs. You can see a big green bright bar down there. And that bar is telling me that we have a lot of industry and we have a lot of commercial. And we have pretty much nothing in terms of residents. And even our population is at 66,000, which is not actually that much in terms of the whole scheme of things. So we we do need to focus on a bit of suburbs. So that is going to be in the next episode, um, focusing on some of the suburbs around this airport. And then when I finish up around the airport, we're going to be going in a completely different uh, location. And I don't want to say too much more about that because... I, still kind of working on a couple of bits and pieces when I say we are I really do mean we are uh, more information to come though maybe the information's already out I don't know I, <laughs> it's kind of hard when you're releasing these episodes in advance uh, recording these episodes in advance more info more information to come but the take home message from that is in uh, industry is focused for today next step is going to be about suburbs uh, Looking forward to suburbs. I love the suburbs around Springwood. Um, I love the inspiration um, I am taking for those places. So I'm pretty keen to head on into the suburbs and get some more people driving into our city. Um, it's always exciting when you start fleshing out a city and seeing people use these roads. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but about three episodes ago, we placed down a lot of these uh, road networks and they were just deserted. And now so many people are driving to the airport and then once we get some suburbs around here we're going to be seeing quite a lot of people going to um, the CBD. Uh, when I actually loaded up the game a couple of days ago I spent a really long time just checking out the movement of the city and just watching how well it's starting to um, flow. We have so many suburbs and they are really sprawling just all around the city. We have some distance, we have some close, and it's really exciting to see how people are actually getting around the city uh, using the roads and using the trains and using the trams. It's just really, really cool. Um, I, you know, I guess you don't really understand, but being so large, it, um, you, like, it feels like a city. Like, it's really starting to feel like a city. Which is really cool. I'm really glad we've actually plopped down this airport because that has really changed the feel of Springwoods um, for the better. And this whole area going over the bridge and working on this side, uh, it's just it's just been a real it's been a real delight. Um, so very exciting stuff in the future for Springwoods. We are really knuckling down and getting lots of work done. And this wiki page is only means good stuff to come. I can't wait to see how much the city improves in terms of atmosphere and an understanding that you guys will have of the actual city with that interactive map and seeing I guess a lot more pictures in terms of where everything sits and the stories behind everything and it means that you can uh, jump onto Springwood and check out bits and pieces and even interact and add bits and pieces without me having to upload any episodes. We are getting into crazy nerdum right now. <laughs> we, are just, we are just in a whole other level of nerd and just like I love it. This is this is where this is the space that I wanted Springwood to go into and um talking to Strictosa the other day and I mentioned that I was interested in making this wiki and I had this whole idea of everyone making this story and this website and all these bits and pieces and he was just like far out man that is that is really out there and um, he's right it's totally out there it's 
it's full on. But it's great. This is exactly the space I wanted. And this is where I wanted to be going with Springwood. Um, just total crazy nerdum. Um, and building something that is totally collaborated with everyone, not just me. And I'm excited at how big this project has become and how many little projects exist within it and how many easter eggs and realistic bits and pieces we have just within this city. I mean, we are going one year strong now and there's so many bits and pieces I don't think you really have any idea of how in-depth this city has become, which is so exciting and by creating stories behind places I think that's only going to make this whole experience uh, way more interesting. Before I say sayonara to you all, um, I am building my favourite little spots of today and this is a um, little industrial spot with these train lines that I was mentioning before. I love these train lines, I think they turned out really nice using those parking roads and uh, just splicing the train line into that spot I think works really nice and adding so many of these uh, shrubs just to really highlight that these places are quite unkept and badly maintained it's basically they made it and then they leave it and they don't you know trim any weeds or uh, fix up any bits and pieces. It's just a industrial area and that is it. Which is, you know, something that I really love about these areas is just how wild they really are because nobody is really around these places unless they work here and they're usually probably only well kept in places where people actually go. But guys, like I said before, this is pretty much the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and for all your um, nice, lovely comments that you I don't know how you end up whipping out every episode, but you're so damn cool. I really do love it so much. So guys, thank you so much. Um, I've had so much fun building this episode, and I really look forward to um, your company in the next one. But until next time, have a great week, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Thank you.